Dr. Venus um, here on the first day of the Olympia Expo. It is the 50th anniversary of the 2014 Olympia and I'm here with Dr. Lane Norton. Good to be here. Um, Dr. Norton, you are basically world famous for huh. your... <laughs> giving me too much credit. Oh, I, I don't think so, not at all. I think that you, your nutrition concepts, your training concepts are very well respected. Um, everything's always up for debate, but people sure. very much respect your, your opinion. Um, what do you find is the biggest debate you often get into with, with people asking about nutrition? Well, I, I'd say recently it's kind of, you know, clean eating versus if it fits your macros, just because that's kind of been something that I've been talking about quite a bit, and uh, we were actually talking about before the interview. Um, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions about certain things, because I'm a, as a lot of people know, I'm kind of a fan of flexible dieting. Um, and I was talking about this last night when I was out at dinner. You know, my, not that I have a problem with quote unquote eating clean, other than the fact you can't really define it, there's no objective definition of that. But, you know, nutrient-rich foods, that sort of thing. But the problem is when you kind of, you know, it's psychology 101. We can't, as much as we like to separate psychology from physiology, we can't do that. We all, we're all mental creatures, you know? And so, if you tell somebody, okay, eat these foods, not these foods, they can do it for six weeks, 12 weeks, whatever, but eventually, they're going to eat other foods. And if you tell them they can't have foods, now there's a certain guilt that's associated with eating a bad food, it leads to, I've seen it, now not everybody, but I've seen it with a lot of people, it leads to disordered eating habits, you know, kind of a binge restrict cycle that I've seen a lot of people get into. And so what I say to people is, well, instead of getting on that roller coaster, why not have a system of accountability where you can have some foods that you enjoy, but fit them into something where it's not a cheat. So people ask me, when was the last time I had a cheat meal? Or how often I have cheat meals? I said, oh, about seven years ago. Because and nothing's a cheat for me because I account for everything in my macronutrient totals. So I went out to Fogo de Chao last night, right? Brazilian steakhouse, all you can eat. I didn't feel compelled to, you know, go crazy. I kind of, you know, guesstimated, but, but accounted for it. I woke up today a pound lighter, so. <laughs> so. That works out great. But I mean, that's the thing is a lot of people will go on, they'll stick rigidly to their diet and nutrition, but they'll go to Olympia, they'll go, they'll have a wedding or they'll have some kind of event that comes up and they have no idea what to do because they're not used to tracking and having some system of accountability. Whereas they're just told, they just know, eat these foods. And when they can't do that, they're off the deep end, right? So I just try to teach people, hey, if you want to eat clean, that's fine, but still understand what you're taking in macronutrient wise. And that way, when you don't have access to those foods, you can still get pretty darn close. And so it's a system of accountability that I try to teach people. Is this um, system and this philosophy, do you find there's um, more or less flexibility when you're comparing, say, a competitor to someone who's just trying to maintain a healthy uh, diet lifestyle? A good question. So I always look at uh, like flexible dieting, if it fits your macros, as like a budget, okay? So if I make a million dollars, can I afford to go out and buy a $50,000 car? Sure, yeah, as long as I take care of my mortgage and I take care of my my retirement, I take care of my family, all, all my requirements, I have some fun money to spend, right? But if I make $60,000 a year, should I go drop a on a $50,000 car if it's gonna make me not pay my mortgage, make me not take care of those other things? I got? Absolutely not. If it fits your macros, is the same way. So if somebody has a very fast metabolism, they're able to eat a lot of, you know, eat more carbohydrates, more fats, and they get, you know, all their micronutrients, all their fiber, and they have some left over to play with, can they afford to do that? Absolutely, it's not gonna harm them at all. But with a competitor, eventually, typically most people will get restricted enough to get lean enough that they're not gonna be able to do that in large amounts, right? So for me, I'm in the off season right now and I'm maintaining about 10, 12 pounds above stage weight and feel great. I eat ice cream every day because my I, I'm on trading days, I'm eating over 400 grams of carbs a day. So I can, I can still hit all my totals, account for that, but I don't feel any need to overeat on it because it's not something forbidden, if that makes sense. Well, that, well, that sounds actually pretty great. Ice cream, looking lean and feeling great. <laughs> well, see, correlation is causation, so all I know is I eat ice cream and I hit PRs, so. <laughs> We're gonna have to explore that a little bit more later, perhaps <laughs> after the show. Um, I also hear that you did a lot of consulting on a, a, on a book that's coming out. Yes on the concept of 
reverse dieting. Right. For, for those who are not familiar with that concept, could you explain that a bit more? Sure. So, uh, so the person who wrote it is Sohi Lee. If you guys don't know her, I definitely check her out. Her website is SohiFit.com. She's my assistant for like a lot of the stuff I do, but she's also a great coach in her own right. And so she consulted with me a lot in the book. It's a lot of my concepts and what I've talked about in my video blogs. But essentially reverse dieting, it's not anything magical, but it's just the idea of well, after you do a diet. So a lot of people when they, when they diet for something, they just think about the actual diet itself. They don't think about what's gonna happen afterwards, okay? Anybody who's done a diet or done a show prep or whatever knows that when you go back to eating the way you did before, you regain all that weight, and if not more. Uh, in fact, the data on, on weight regain shows that people who lose weight, 80% um, of them will regain it within a year, and one third to two thirds of those will actually put on more than they had before. And this is a phenomenon called body fat overshooting. So what, we came, what I started thinking about was, okay, eating a diet amount of calories for the rest of your life isn't sustainable. Nobody's gonna be able to live on, you know, I wouldn't call it living on a 1,500 calories a day for the rest of your life, right? You can probably do it, but it wouldn't be much fun, right? Not much living. But also, if you just jump back up to whatever you're doing before, you're gonna regain all that body fat. That's what the data says. So the concept was slowly adding in calories to restore your metabolic rate and minimize body fat gain. And so it's, it can be very difficult to do because what do you want to do at the end of the diet? You really want to eat. So what this book is, is giving people kind of a framework of how to do it, um, you know, guidelines of how much to add each week, you know, what you should do if different things come up. It's over 20,000 words. It's really well broken down. And uh, we really try to cover every single question we could possibly think of. And not only that, but it comes with, um, you know, a, a basic workout template, a cardio template, uh, information on both those, how to adjust them, uh, FAQs, and also a book on uh, flexible dieting. So for people who are like counting macros, it's really not that difficult, but can be intimidating to people who have never done it before. So we also include a book on how to count macros. And so all that comes packaged and bundled. And I think it's, again, I tell people reverse dieting, the purpose of it is not to lose body fat in the short term. The purpose of it is to restore your metabolic rate after a diet, minimize body fat gain, so that in the future, your subsequent uh, dieting sessions will be more effective. Because what I tend to see with people is through each dieting cycle, they get worse and worse. It gets harder and harder for them to lose weight. And they put on more and more, then they're off. So what I like to see is let's make it to where it gets easier and easier, right? And I've noticed that with myself, my clients, that sort of thing. Not everybody, everybody responds differently because everybody's genetics are different. But I find that most people, when they do it this way, get better and better over time.